How many of us got to let our mind, our will, and our emotions say, hey, how great is our God? Submit to our greatness of our God. My mind, my will, and my emotions. My thoughts on all. Great are you, Lord. Greater are you, Lord. Greater are you than the thoughts. I was sitting there just praying and just all these crazy, weird thoughts started coming. Guess what? I got to pull down strongholds. I got to take every thought captivity. I got to go to war. And that's how we fight our battles, right? Get on your knees. Get in front of the, pres- in the, in front of the Lord and seek his face. And watch what happens. Things change. Things shift. And you put a room full of people together and that heart and that mind and that soul and big things change and big things shift. That's why there's an evil, and I'm going to tell you flat out, an evil demonic spirit that wants to close churches down. That don't want people to sing the praises of God. Guess what? Ain't happening. It's not happening. Why we were, what just happened here is why we come together. Why we worship the Lord. Why we sing our praises unto the Lord. I don't know about you, but I don't know how depression can stand in a place like that. I don't know how sickness can thrive in a place like that. It ain't happening in heaven, is it? Is it happening in heaven? Is there sickness, disease, any of those things? No. He said to pray, Father, (laughs) Father, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Let your kingdom come, Lord. Let your kingdom come. And we are agents of the kingdom. We are high priests of his kingdom. And we're not going to shut up. We're not going to quit singing praise. We're not going to quit speaking the truth and declaring the goodness and the mercy of God. Amen? He's our king. He's our highest authority. There's no other like him. And we need to be, we didn't pray during, the, during that time, but remember the church, there's churches this morning, this morning in this state, who have been told by the government, by the governor, and by the police force, do not have service anymore. And you know what they're doing? Praise the Lord. They said the first thousand people and your pastor are going to be fined. All these things are going to happen. Praise the Lord. They're having a Daniel moment. They're having a Daniel moment. You know what? Don't think it couldn't happen here. And I'm going to tell you what. You better make your mind up. Are you going to be a Daniel or are you not? You better start figuring some stuff out. Because I could probably tell you, I ain't closing this church again. I might not be your pastor. That's also a reality. There's a God that I serve, and his name is King of Kings. And his name is Lord of Lords. And that doesn't mean every single one of you are going to say, well, that's what God's telling me. And I'm okay with that. But each one of us are going to stand before the Lord someday. And you're not going to be with me, and I'm not going to be with you. But we're each going to give an account for what we've heard him say. And what he's spoken to us. Amen? And you can say, well, Pastor Steve, you might be. I might be. I might be. I might be just crazy enough to believe what his word says. And that's going to look really foolish in this time and age. And I think the Lord told us that would happen. He said, darkness will look like light. People will say things that are sweet are sour. People will say evil is good. Well, I'm going to tell you what. Evil ain't good. Light isn't darkness. Sour isn't sweet. His word's true. God's true. Let man be a liar. His word's true. Each one of us got to to come to a point that we understand this is the day we're in. And you're not here by mistake. You were not an accident. You're here for such a time as this, in this day and in this age. And there's not fear involved with that. Because you've got a God that is on your side and, and you are surrounded and wrapped up. He is, you're surrounded by him. He is everywhere all the time. He's a ridiculously amazing God. And we're his sons and we're his daughters. And he loves us. And he's given us a mission to be salt and to be light. Not to be vinegar and not to be lightning. Because I was going to be vinegar and lightning there for a while. Serious, that's the flesh. Should we call down fire from heaven, Lord, and consume them all? That sounds like a good plan. No, (laughs) that's not the plan, boys. 
Be salt. Make them thirsty for me. Be light. Expose. Let, let your glory, let my glory shine through you that people would see that glory and come running towards it. Not running away from it. Amen? That's a good word, Lord. All right. Um, whatever I told you, Lisa, about the first word, just scrap that. <laughs> I thought it sounded good. Not anymore. Maybe it'll sound good the next service. I'm going to talk about that this morning. We're speaking about the spirit of holiness. The spirit of holiness. That's, that's like, it, it, it did get quiet. And it, usually when I was kind of telling Pastor Linda, that she's like, so what are we I'm doing? Spirit of holiness. She was like, oh. You know, it's sad to me, and, and I was raised this way and grew up, and in, in holiness has almost, almost become a bad word to me. I hear the word holiness, and it would just, oh. I'd want to duck. I felt like I was getting in trouble. I was getting whooped. Getting, I don't know if you ever sat under like a holiness. Uh, and holiness is right. It's, it's good. But man takes it to an extreme and has done this. And it becomes religious. And it becomes a, a weapon. And that is just not who God is. So don't duck this morning. Don't cringe. This is, this is, we're going through the seven spirits of God. And I don't know about you, but I've been so blessed. And, and, and I'm seeing, like, each, each one of those, like, active, active in my life and recognizing, oh, that's, that's the spirit of grace. Oh, that's the spirit of life. How many, need, how many enjoyed the spirit of adoption this week? Did, did you have any of those encounters like, oh, I've got some privileges and some rights. I can come boldly in, and the Lord sees me as that, right? That's a good thing. Well, I want us to encounter, and, and, and boy, for such a time as this, is the spirit of holiness activating us, and we need it. So... I'm going to give you the basis, and, and um, just for time's sake, I'm not going to go rehash over um, Revelation. Um, you can look in the first, I think it's the first six, seven verses in the uh, book of Revelation, and you'll see the spirit of holiness, um, or the spirit, the seven spirits of God, the spirit of uh, uh, life, adoption, grace, holiness, supplication, truth, and glory. But today we're going to look at the spirit of holiness. And where we see this, um, our, we get our basis, is in Romans chapter 1, verse 4. Now, Paul is given an introduction to the Romans, and in verse 4 he says, Who was declared the Son of God, we're speaking of Jesus, with power by the resurrection from the dead, according to the Spirit of holiness, Jesus Christ our Lord. So Jesus was declared the Son of God with the power by the resurrection from the dead, according to the Spirit of holiness, Jesus Christ our Lord. So the Spirit of holiness... This is a person. The Holy Spirit is a person. And I explained, and we're going to just keep so we, we're not people getting weird. There's, a, there's menorah as one candlestick with seven different lights shining forth from it, right? The Holy Spirit is that candlestick with seven spirits. Just like the Trinity, there's three, but it's one. One Holy Spirit with seven manifestations, seven lights, seven spirits that, that shine forth out of him. And we're going to look at the spirit of holiness this morning. Here's, here's what God looks at um, sin. And, and I wrote this up. God is the enemy of sin wherever he finds it. And just in case you're wondering, a lot of where I learned really my basis in, in, of the seven spirits of God was from a book called um, The Spirit Himself by Ralph M. Riggs. Um, I would have never come across that book had I not went to Teen Challenge and was able to be discipled by uh, a beautiful couple. Um, and the, the, the daughter of Ralph M. Riggs was uh, married to Donnell McLean. And Donnell and Vinda McLean were missionaries, and some of you have heard me speak of, the, of them. They were missionaries to um, uh, Japan right after World War II for 40-something years, established um, the Assemblies of God in Japan and was the, the head of the Assemblies of God in Japan. Her dad was Ralph M. Riggs, who was the general overseer of the Assemblies of God. He was the man, like the big shot. And he had wrote this book called The, the um, Spirit Himself. It was very, very wise. Um, but anyways, Donnell had told me about it when he goes, I'm going to get you a book. So he gave me this book, and it was written, like in, I think, in the 40s or so, and um, powerful. So this, this is where um, I got my basis of the seven spirits of God. We see him scripturally. But um, Ralph M. Riggs, who was the general overseer of the assemblies, is the one who wrote about this. And, and I've given all of our staff um, this book, and it's powerful. It's, it's one of the best things I've ever read on the Holy Spirit. Um, it is... 
It is beautiful. I, I taught, you know, for weeks and weeks to our youth um, back in the day, and we've seen a lot of um, beautiful works come out of that. So um, th- not everything I'm speaking on the spirit of holiness came out of that book, but certain there's been some, some parts, and this is part of, that I'm speaking. Um, God is the enemy of sin wherever he finds it. In the heart of the believer, he attacks it immediately. The spirit of holiness as the spirit of judgment uncovers and condemns all that is wrong. Now, I want to stop. Some of you are going, well, God's not judgment. God is condemning and judging sin, not people. Okay? So that's not a a heresy. God is the enemy of sin wherever he finds it. In the heart of the believer, he attacks it immediately. The spirit of holiness as the spirit of judgment uncovers and condemns all that is wrong. And as the spirit of burning purges it out, This is the work that is not too pleasant to the believer, but is so very vital to the program of God. Amen? How many have that Holy Spirit conviction and that that holiness, that burning fire? Is our God a consuming fire? Oh, yes, he is. And that Holy Spirit will come and consume and purify us. Amen? And how many have had that? It's not too pleasing sometimes at the time, but oh, the fruit of it. (laughs) But oh, the fruit of that holiness, the spirit of holiness, when he comes in, and it's not a person. Like, I don't, I don't have to point my finger at you guys. Like, I, I've seen enough of that. The person trying to be the spirit of holiness. The pastor trying to be the spirit of holiness. I'm not the spirit of holiness. The Holy Spirit, I'm not your convictor. The Holy Spirit does a great job of that. He's the convictor of the world. He, he's the convictor of sin. I'm not. Now, there might be times I'm going to speak the word and speak the truth, and that might bring conviction, but it's not me. It's the Holy Spirit. So I don't try to be him. And I've had people a lot of times, well, you probably should go tell so-and-so. No, I don't feel the Holy Spirit telling me to do that. I've had many times, I've had people ask me that I've led to the Lord, well, well, what do you think about this? You know, it doesn't really matter what I think. I think you need to seek the Holy Spirit. I think you need to get in the Word. And you know what? As you get in the Word and you ask the Holy Spirit what he thinks about it, he'll put his finger on it. And, and you know what? Sometimes there's some differences for some of us. There's some things that he knows, like, you really, you can't handle this. This is going to cause you to have some serious issues. This isn't for you. And then we want to go and tell everybody, this isn't for you. And the Holy Spirit's going, well, hold on a second. Is that what I said, or did I say this isn't for you? Now, everything that's in here that is written, this isn't for you. It isn't for us. Right? Are are we clear? All right. Thank you, Holy Spirit. He's good. He's so much better than I am. Oh, my Lord. (laughs) Let's look at Hebrews chapter 12, verse 5 through 16. Now, this is so cool. Um, This is something I was just in my reading this week. It came out, and I'm like, man, I'm putting this in here. This 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 has to be in here. It ties together what what we just had as as sons, right? The spirit of adoption. So Hebrews 12, 5 through 16, and I'm reading it out of the New Living Translation this morning. It says, And have you forgotten the encouraging words God spoke to you as his children? He said, look at it. Have you forgotten the encouraging word? The encouraging word. Remember that. I really need you get to stay on that. My child, don't make light of the Lord's discipline. This is an encouraging word. And don't give up when he corrects you. For the Lord's disciplines those he loves. And he punishes each one he accepts as his child. Now then he goes on. As you endure this divine discipline. Wow. Divine discipline. Remember that God is treating you as his own children. Oh my Lord, isn't that awesome? Who ever heard of a child who is never disciplined by its father? Well, we've seen it. The police are having to deal with it. We've seen it in the grocery stores. We've seen it. We're seeing. I mean, I've seen it in church. It's crazy. You're like. Wow. I mean, I. I I, I, did, I got some discipline, I'm just going to say. And you know what? 
It was good. I learned some valuable lessons. I learned how to respect people. I learned that like all adults, you respect. When you go to someone's house, you respect their house. You don't jump on their stuff. Like, that's theirs. Like, you might do that to, but you ain't do it to theirs. Like, you're not even hungry when you go to other people's houses, I was taught. If they ask you for, you know, you say, no, I'm good. If, if, they, if you want something, nope, we ate. Like, <laughs> thank you. No. I didn't always respect authority because we all have an ability to be rebellious. Especially when they tell you something you don't want to hear. I don't like that. But guess what? I knew there was a cost. I just weighed it up. I'd go, is this worth it? Because I know discipline's going to come. Is it worth it? Don't do that. When you're dealing with right, the times we're in and dealing with God, it ain't worth it. Oh, it ain't worth it. We have the spirit of holiness that lives inside of us that will put his finger on things and go, that's not for you. Hold up a little bit. Because he loves us, he disciplines us. Because he loves us, he's training us and teaching us. Because we're his sons and his daughters. As you endure his divine discipline, remember that God is treating you as his own children. Who ever heard of a child who is never disciplined by its father? If God doesn't discipline you as he does all of his children, it means that you are illegitimate. Ooh. And are not really his children at all. Since we respected our earthly fathers who disciplined us, shouldn't we submit even, submit even more to the discipline of the father of our spirits and live forever? For our earthly fathers, listen guys, our earthly fathers disciplined us for a few years doing the best they knew how. I like this translation. We were disciplined by earthly, they, they, doing the best they knew how. Right? And some of that didn't go good. <laughs> some, of it, some of it did. But they were doing the best they knew how. Amen? But look at, look at how God di disciplines us. But God's discipline is always good for us. Can you imagine? We've got to get that. It's always good for us. There's never a question, is this good for me? It's always good for us. So that we might share in what? His holiness. Oh my goodness. We can share in his holiness. It'll, it'll hit next week. <laughs> this was like, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe you're all a bunch a lot holier than I am. I read that and I go... Can't compute, can't compute, can't compute. He's disciplining us and teaching us and training us so that we can participate in his holiness. His holiness is ridiculous. No discipline is enjoyable while it is happening. Everyone says amen, right? I mean, I never was disciplined. I was like, this is great. Give me more. No. If that happened, they were doing it wrong. <laughs> I promise you. <laughs> it's painful. But afterward. Aren't you glad that we have a God that loves us enough? He loves us enough. Because he knows the fruit that will come. And any, any father that's ever disciplined your child or mother, if, if you've had to be the one to do that, um, fathers, don't put that on your wife, husbands. Don't put that on your wives. Biblically, that's your, that's your role. You can write me later. I can tell that's going over beautifully. It's not in my notes, so I'm pretty sure that was the Holy Spirit. No father enjoys it. I hate it. You, I've talked to my boys. You, I always lay down. God, God does this with us. He lets us know ahead of time. It's not for you. Please don't. 
It's not for you. And then we, if we do it, he doesn't come angry. He's not mad. He knows I love him. I have to train him. I have to teach him. I don't want him, I don't want him running out in that street and getting run over. I don't want the enemy coming and stealing, killing, and destroying their life and their family. So he has to discipline us. And it's not fun at the moment. But oh, the fruit that comes. Amen? Afterward, there will be a peaceful harvest. Peaceful. Peaceful harvest of right living for those who are trained in this way. The peaceful harvest of right living for those who are trained in this way. So listen to what he says. It's so good. So take a new grip with your tired hands. How many's got some tired? Take a new grip with your tired hands and strengthen your weak knees. Mark out a straight path for your feet. That those who are weak and lame will not fall because, and become strong. I want to st- just hand, stay here for a second. Holiness and walking in and having the spirit of holiness live in you. The Holy, the Holy Spirit will mark out a straight path for you. It's so good. Like, we are going through this obstacle course of life. But the Lord has went before us and he's marked out a path. He's marked out a path for us. And it's a good path. It's a great path. And he knows, like, there's going to be times you're going to get, you're going to get weak, you're going to get tired. You're... Strengthen yourself. Don't give up. Mark out a straight path for your feet so that those who are weak and lame, <laughs> this is so important. There's some people who are hurting, and you could be one of them, but sometimes we grow and we get to a spot where we're pretty healthy, and we think, oh, now I can run amok and do what I want. I don't have to follow this path. Like, I'm good. What's over here? Hey, let's, that looks cool. But there's, there could be some people who are following a path and they've been injured. They've got, they've got some bad knees. They've got some bad backs. They've got twisted ankles. They've got some broken things going on in their life. And you're leading them into some really dangerous territory. You're able to go running through there because you're not beat up. You keep on that path and you will end up bruised up, beat up, knees bent, twisted, sprained. But I really want you to think about those who are weak and lame. If you mark out a path and you follow the path that the Holy Spirit's led, those who are weak and lame will be able to follow. They'll be able to follow. You know what's going to, they're going to be protected and they're going to be safe. And they're, they're going to get healed. Amen? They'll not fall but become strong. Work at. This is a word in, uh, in some translations, the words pursue. Um, I like the New Living. This is really why I chose this because they really put the heart of the word in the Greek. The word in the Greek is diokhi, and it means pursue, follow hard after. Follow hard after. In the, in the New Living here, it says work at. He says it twice. Work at. Diokhi, pursue hard after, but in peace with everyone. And work at, pursue, run hard after living a holy life. We've got to pursue this and work hard after it. How do we pursue living a holy life? We realize that there's a spirit of holiness that lives in us and is guiding us and directing us. And how many know if you're not knowing that there's this spirit of holiness that's speaking to you and talking to you, you might not be listening as well? I didn't know what that was. Well, there's a spirit of holiness that lives in you, and he's going to be speaking to you and guiding you on that path. And it's a beautiful thing. And, and it's not a condemning, judgmental thing. He condemns and judges sin. Not you. He's purging. It's that fire that comes, and it purges us. And, and he puts his finger on things, and we go, oh, I don't think that's for me. Listen to it. And it might not be for you or for, for others. He goes on to say, for those who are not holy will not see the Lord. Those who are not holy will not see the Lord. Now that can be, some people, well, that's, you're not going to see the Lord when that day comes. I'm putting, you're not going to see him. You're not going to see his face as a believer. You can have a relationship 
And I'll tell you, when, when we're not in a place of holiness and we're not allowing the Holy Spirit and submitting to the Holy Spirit in our lives, you're at a distance. How many have experienced that? There's a distance between you and the Lord, between you and the Father. You can kind of see there's a, there's, he's out there, but he's not here. You're not going to see his face. You're not going to be in that intimate spot. And that's where we want to believe. That's where we want to be. And that's where he wants us. He wants us to see his face. He wants us to see how magnificent. He wants us to see his glory. He wants us to see his grace and his mercy and his love and his justice. And all of those things that he is, he wants us to see it. But if we're not in holiness and we're not allowing the Holy Spirit to manifest in our life and lead us, you're not going to see it. That's not my word. That's the word. Work at living in peace with everyone and work at living a holy life. For those who are not holy will not see the Lord. Look after each other so that none of you fails to receive the grace of God. And watch out that no poisonous root of bitterness grows up to trouble you, corrupting many. That's a big watch out. Poisonous root of bitterness. How many has encountered, you have plenty of opportunity to become bitter? <laughs> every single one, in every facet, it is such an evil thing. We can become so embittered, and it's poisonous. It's so crazy, it's, and it's that weed. How many know weed spread? <laughs> if you don't pull that sucker up by what? The root. They come back. That is like one of my little things with, that, with the boys. I'm like so trying to teach them like, Dude, just pulling the top off. <laughs> no, you, you got to get to the root. You got to get the root out. Otherwise, this is meaningless. It's going to spread. We got to realize that bitterness is poison. It's poison for us, and it's poison for us. This is important that we're in these days and times. Bitterness is not for us. Whatever we got to do, let the spirit of holiness put his finger on things and go, that's not for you. Let go of it. What's causing it? Are you susceptible to that? Well, maybe it's not the thing that just happened. Maybe there's a root. We allow the Holy Spirit to dig at that root. You go, oh, it's painful. Yes, it is. He said that, that there's going to be some pain involved in discipline. There's going to be some pain involved in in. Uh, Discipline is discipling, really, if you do it right. There could be some pain in that, but oh, the fruit. Can you imagine having a bitterless, free life, no bitterness in your life at all? And no bitterness around anyone else and not knowing that you're not poisoning anyone. Wouldn't that be awesome? The spirit of holiness can cause that to happen. So, we're to pursue hard after peace and holiness. We're to diokeet, pursued hard after peace and holiness. Here's why. Because it's absolutely impossible to see God without it. Wow. It's absolutely impossible to see God without holiness. It says, be ye holy, for I am holy. And I told, said last week, what is holiness? Like, we can look at, it's a, a set apart. It's all, I'm going to tell you and you can think whatever, um, this has been one of the easiest for me to understand, and it just makes sense. It's different. It's different. Holiness means you're, it's different. Sanctified could be like this special, and it is, and it is, it's a special thing, like a cup that's only used for, you know, drinking. It's not the same cup that you use for, you know, putting your tools in and cleaning them out, you know. It's, it's special. We're holy. We're different. We're supposed to look different than, it's not common. People will see that there's something different about you, but it doesn't have to be what you're wearing. They don't have makeup on, they're holy. No, they're ugly. <laughs> I, hey, not everyone, but I'll tell you what, I'm just, I'm going to stop. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I did have a pastor one time, though. He said it was pretty funny. He said, look, if the barn needs painting, paint it. <laughs> oh. Oh. 
Living by faith in pursuit of a righteous life is not optional. You hear me? In this day and time, living by faith and pursuing a righteous life is not optional. It's, ne- it's a necessity. It is a necessity. See, I have to teach and I have to be able to, to minister on holiness, and I want to do it as right as I can because without it, we're not going to see him. We're going to miss a whole lot of stuff. Isaiah 4 4. And boy, talk about. Go, go back and read the book of Isaiah if you, haven't, if you have it for a while. And man, well, just all of the Bible comes pretty much coming alive like ridiculous like never before right now. Isn't that awesome? I mean, if there's one thing, like there was a question asked in the men's breakfast last, uh, yesterday. If there was one thing like that's kind of standing out in this time, to me, it's the Word of God. If the Word of God is standing out so ridiculously amazing to me, it's like, wow. I mean, I've always known it was true and I've always loved it. I love the Word. But it's like, whoa. Like, you did you like, this is for us. <laughs> like, man, this is so good. So go back. When the Lord has washed away the filth, Isaiah 4, 4. When the Lord has washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion and purged the bloodshed of Jerusalem from her midst by the spirit of judgment and the spirit of burning. Man, that's the, the spirit of holiness even in the Old Testament. Moving, purging, washing. Remember, we, we talked about, and, and, and we're still in the last days speaking on, in the book of Revelation, we talked about the church as the bride, right? So going back to that washing, we as the bride must be without spot or wrinkle, amen? She must be holy and without blemish. The Holy Spirit is busy, listen, the Holy Spirit is busy cleansing her by the washing of water by the word. The spirit of holiness is cleansing us, and can you, I just picture the Holy Spirit just cleansing us up, washing us, getting us ready. It's so pretty, such a beautiful picture. In the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, it says, Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church, and gave himself up for her, so that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, that he might present to himself the church in all her glory, having no spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she would be holy and blameless. We need the spirit of holiness in this time because he's getting ready to come and get his bride. Amen? Amen. How many want to be seen spotless? Not a wrinkle. And yes, I understand that happens by the blood. But we have an act, we have a, a, a sanctification process in our own walk. Positionally, you're holy. You'll never be any holier than when the blood's applied. But there's a, a life in our life, there's a process of sanctification. And we're growing in that, amen? And we're being taught that, and we're, and we're being disciplined at times in that, amen? But it's from a loving God. So I, I've heard um, about the husbands and wives part. I, I just want to say something, and I know our, our men are pretty awesome. I'm talking to all the other ones that are out there. Um, <laughs> it says, the husbands, you're to cleanse your, your wife by the washing of the water of the word. Don't beat her with it. Amen. It is it is your job to minister, wash, bring the word in a loving way. That and I gotta I gotta do a better job of that. Sometimes I can just be like, well, the word says. Well, that's kind of like a whack. It needs to be a. Let me just speak the word over you and just love on you. Amen. That's isn't that what he's doing with us? Sometimes there has to be some adjustments. There has to be some things go on but it's not in a, in a abusive way. Amen? So the word um, in, this, in, the, in Ephesians 5, washing, means bath. Newsreel. <laughs> but I want I to share something that this, this word and this process in the Jewish culture. The Jews of the time often took ritual baths to show cleansing or a change. But other times a bride was required. Now this is what I really want us to pay attention to. A bride was required to do this shortly before her wedding. This was done in a mikvah, which was often a cistern cut out of stone and filled by rain. It was holy. 
to avoid dirtying the water in the ceremonial mikvah, individuals bathed first. They washed before the mikvah. If we apply this to our verse that we just read, the Holy Spirit washes us with the word to make us clean so that we can take the mikvah, which precedes our marriage to him. Isn't that cool? There's a bathing process going on that we're washing, the Holy Spirit's washing us, preparing us for that day. So then when there's that ceremonial time with the Lord, it's so that when we come to that point, we're already clean. We're not dirty in that water. That was a ceremonial thing that happened in the Jewish culture. And we see that picture that this is what the Holy Spirit's doing. This is, this is what, if we allow the Holy Spirit to cleanse us and we allow that spirit of holiness to, to purge us, it's a beautiful thing, amen? And you're going to see the results of that, which is beautiful. You'll see his face, church. When you go spend time in prayer, you're going to see his face. You're going to see his glory. You're going to see his beauty. You're not going to see from afar off and hear things that are like, oh, well, so-and-so said this about God, and I heard this about God. When you're being holy and cleansed, and you're going into that place, all those other things that he said, she said, they said, go away because you're seeing his face. I'm going to continue on. If, if we want to be filled with the Holy Spirit, and I'm going to um, give a little teaching here, not a lot, but we'll get into some more of that as, as the days come, but if we want to be filled with the Spirit, we must allow the Holy Spirit to search us and condemn and destroy things in our lives that are not pleasing to Him so that He can cleanse us, so that He can dwell there in power. Amen? Now, I'm not saying this is for every single time, but I know there's, there's certain times that some some folks have a struggle sometimes of receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes, so if this is you, don't take, this isn't aimed at you. This is sometimes the Holy Spirit, and I know he's done this with me, he'll put his finger on some things. And if we're not willing to allow him to purge some of those things out, he's not going to come and dwell in power. I know, that's like old school, right? <laughs> it's the truth. It's the truth. He's not going to empower you when you're in disobedience. He's not going to bless that. That doesn't mean you're going to be perfect, but there's things in our lives that are strongholds. There's things in our lives that we, we just got our feet dug in. He's going to say, no, nope, I need you to deal with that. So if that's going on, say, Lord, search my heart, O oh God. Search my heart, O oh God. If there be anything in me that's not pleasing to you, Please put your hand on it. Please put your finger on it. Amen? Amen. Amen. The phrase spirit of holiness. <laughs> spirit of holiness tells us that holiness is not just a state of grace or a sanctifying act, that it's a divine person. Divine person, the spirit of holiness. And, and it is he who produces the quality of holiness in our life. He produces it. I really want you guys to see it's not people. I'm not, I'm not producing you to become holy. I'm not going to be like, okay, here's 25 things you can't do anymore, and if you, if you do them, you're not holy. If you dress like this, you ain't holy. If you wear your hair this way, you're not. If you cut your, if you wear, what? Stop it. I'm not the spirit of holiness. There's a Holy Spirit, and he's a person, and I'm not him. And neither are you. Aren't you glad? I feel so much better. <laughs> I feel relieved. Like, this isn't my church. This is his church. This is his church. I got to be careful. You know, I'll never forget. I was driving by a church in Valley Springs, and we lived, we just lived around the corner. I was driving by the church, and, he, and he's, I'll never forget these words. He said, I need you to be real careful how you talk to my church. I'm like, ooh. And it wasn't like I was doing something wrong. It was that he was wanting me to understand, that's my bride. I'll tell you what, you need to be real careful how you talk to my bride. And I'm not trying, I hope you hear me. And every single man on this planet should feel that way. You need to be real careful how you talk to my bride. I talk my kids that way. You can ask them. There's certain times they start getting a little lippy and like, come here. You might think you're talking to your mom. You're not. You're talking to my wife. And you need to be real careful. 
you're about to cross a line. And there's going to come some discipline. And I'll probably have to wait 10 minutes before I do it. Church, your brothers and sisters are the bride of Christ. Be real careful how you talk to his bride. I'm going to say something and plug your ears if you're offended. Don't call his bride a whore. Or a harlot. Or a prostitute. Because in that day, ones that wore makeup or, oh, you know, nah, 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 and that, that still can kind of stuff happens today. We get real judgmental, point our finger at people because they do this, that, and the other. You need to be real careful. Or people saying, well, that's not of God. You know, if they did that, that's not of God. They're not of God. They're... So then you're calling their, you know what you call someone whose father isn't, right? Be real careful. The spirit of holiness is not that way. That ain't holiness. That's judgment. That's not a holy spirit. <laughs> That's an evil spirit. It's a religious spirit, and there's nothing holy about it. Don't get them confused. Tell you what, I can recognize that spirit a mile away. It's one of the most evil spirits I've ever confronted, and it likes to keep trying to come around. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1 through 6. Paul says, as a prisoner of the Lord, listen to his words, I plead with you. I plead with you to walk holy in a way that is suitable to your high rank. Church, <laughs> you got to understand who you are. You have such a high calling on your life. For the times that we're in, there's a high calling on your life. You are priests, sons and daughters of the Most High God, ambassadors to this earth. I plead with you to walk holy in a way that is suitable to your high rank, given to you in your divine calling. With tender humility and quiet patience, always demonstrate gentleness, and generous love towards one another, especially towards those who may try your patience. Has there ever been passages of Scripture you just want to take out? Am I the only one? Because if I got to, like, if there was, like, an option, like, you can take a couple, that would be one. Like, did you have to put, even, I mean, just a, how about just take especially out? Always demonstrate gentleness and, and generous love towards one another, especially toward those who may try your patience. Be faithful to guard the sweet harmony of the Holy Spirit. Isn't it sweet? Man, there's no harmony like the, Spirit, the Holy Spirit's harmony. There's no harmony in your own life. And I'm not even talking, like, harmony is multiple people, right? Harmony of... But the harmony that's just in your own life, when you've allowed the Holy Spirit to like tune you and tighten some strings up and bring your life into, ah, whoa, that sounds good. You ever play a guitar or any instrument and it's out of tune? That's our life when we're not allowing the, the spirit of holiness to align us and to tune us and to bring us into that harmony. And oh, it's beautiful amongst our brothers and sisters, but just for me, just the harmony that when that happens, just with him. Oh, it's like, man, our lives, it's a sweet sounding, it's not a gong or a clanging cymbal. It's, ah. And then you go around other folks and they're doing, ah. And that all comes together and it's like, whoa, that is awesome. That's what the spirit of holiness is doing right now and wants to do in this time and age when all these other sounds are going on and all these other evil things that, that the Holy Spirit would tune each one of us and bring us all to that point to where there's just this sound and people are going, what is that? Oh, that's my bride. That's my church. Instead of running from it, 
Religion will cause people to run from it. The religious spirit will cause people to run from it. The Holy Spirit will cause people to run to it. Amen? Be faithful to guard the sweet harmony of the Holy Spirit among you in the bonds of peace. Being one body, listen, being one body and one spirit, as you were all called in the same glorious hope of divine destiny. Is, look at what God's plan is. One, be one, unity, one, harmony, one. What's going on in the world? Separate, divide. That's evil. Holiness is together, harmony, one. He lays it out. Being one body and one spirit as you were called into the same glorious hope of divine destiny. For the Lord God is one, and so are we. For we share in one faith, one baptism, one Father. And he is the perfect Father who leads us all, works through us all, and lives in us all. Amen. Amen. I'm closing. If you guys could put some music on. Uh, that would be super awesome. Um, I just want to close on this point here. A person within one's life, then, is the secret of true holiness. If you don't get anything else that I ministered on today, please get this. A person in one's life is true holiness. The person in one's life is the secret to true holiness. And the Holy Spirit the spirit of holiness is that person. It's not the stuff that you do, the things that you wear, the places you go or the places you don't go. The spirit, the person, the person of the spirit of holiness is the secret, not the things. Now, he will affect the things, but they're his things. He's the one who puts his finger on it. We don't do that. We don't need to do that. We don't have to, to live in a place where we got to be like the Holy Spirit police. You know, you measure that. That's not sanctioned outfit. You're not singing the right kind of music. You're not. That's not the Holy Spirit. That's an evil spirit. That's, that's a spirit that causes division. That's the spirit that causes people to go away from the Lord rather than come to him. Now, the Holy Spirit, will. there will be a burning. <laughs> there will be a fire. There will be a, some testing. There will be some things that aren't pleasant at the moment. But, oh, the fruit that comes from them. You're going to see his face, church. You're going to see some intimacies. You're going to see the glory of the Lord. So I want to encourage you. Allow the person <laughs> of the spirit of holiness to have full access to your life. Let him, and we're going to just take a moment, allow the Holy Spirit, and we're not going to waste this opportunity, allow the Spirit of holiness to give a walk through your life, through your mind, through your soul, through your will, through your emotions, through your attitudes. He's already speaking to me on one. He's so awesome. Thank you. You've heard me say, like, I run to the table anymore. It's like, oh, you need to cut something out. Yay! Cut it out of me. I don't want it anymore. I know it's no good, and you don't like it either. <laughs> right? It's a person of the Holy Spirit. You guys might be wondering why I keep saying that. The Holy Spirit's been referred to as an it a lot. Even in the King James Bible, a couple times it says it. The Holy Spirit isn't an it. It's a person that has emotions. You can grieve the Holy Spirit. That means he's a person. He has emotions. He has thoughts. He has, he's a real person. Okay? So Holy Spirit, we submit ourselves to you right now. Come. Walk in our soul. Walk through our emotions. Walk through our attitudes. Walk through our heart. Put your finger on some things and give us uh, that, that encouragement to want to come and, and see the face of the Father, to be holy as you are holy. 
your main function, your main title, holy. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Isaiah saw the Lord high and lifted up. It was holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Lord, purge us. Lord, we want to walk holy before you and innocent before you. Sharpen our, our spirit to be so sensitive that we would feel those little nudges from the Holy Spirit. And Lord, we would want to be so far from anything, Lord, that would make us unclean, that would cause us, Lord, to sin, that would cause us to stumble and cause others to stumble. Lord, I pray that, that as that's happening, we don't pick up a religious spirit and think because we are walking or growing in holiness that we somehow are better than anyone else. That somehow now we are so mature and we have all these answers. And Lord, I just pray, Lord, that you would allow us to walk so freely from that spirit of religion and the religiosity and the, the evilness, Lord, that comes from that. Lord, that we could be clean and pure and whole and free. And Lord, that, that we would be able to be vessels that are holy and different. That people would see how different. And it's that your goodness and your mercy and your love lives in us and dwells in us. And that you have full access in our life and through our life. That is our desire, Lord. That is our heart. Let it be, Lord. Let it be. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen.